as the sun rises and then the sun sets. The fact is that the sun never sets. When we say the sun sets, it's a delusion. Same way, the knowledge always rise. Once you know that he or she is my honey, you never forget it. You don't forget your room, your house. Alas, we forget our essential nature. That is the problem. And what is the problem? The problem is that the mind does not have a hundred percent conviction that I am conscious. No one has <coughs> point ten zeros. 1% conviction that he or she is not my son. Tell me if you have it. You have differences. You may react. You may fight. But there is a 100% conviction. Ah, Ashok, Shivani is your son. 100% conviction. Why I said so? I said so. That is how long I have to attend this session unle until you have a 100% conviction that I am the real self. <laughs> that is the way to put it. We don't have a conviction. And this conviction we don't have because of the delusion that we, we, we believe that this delusion is true. And that is why uh, the masters have said listening, learning, contemplation, reflection, followed by the practice. Until so it means now I have a knowledge that I am the real self done. That is why I said knowledge rise or knowledge rises, knowledge about the real self or the self knowledge rises in stages like the seed becomes a tree takes time. You have to contemplate and reflect on this. I am consciousness. Finished. I am consciousness. No, I am Ashok. I am Stephen. David, I am Anastasia. I am Vedo. Yes, you are. <coughs> so the portion of the delusion, I keep it aside. I am, who are you are? I'm Stephen. Yes, you have to introduce it. But at the same time, simultaneously, hundred percent knowledge is there, I'm real sure. You have succeeded in meditation. Again, I'm repeating. Pay attention to it. I'm repeating the same thing. We don't have point zero zero, make it twenty zero plus one percent non conviction or a doubt about who is my honey, where is my home, who am I, my gender, my age. Tell me if you have. We may tell a lie, you know. Uh, you know, you know. If you know, if the person says, "No, you look so young," you know. 
nobody can see me with the white beard, you know. But, uh, oh, you look so beautiful, you look younger. So I hide my age, but I, internally I know it. Don't you have that conviction that you are 40, 50, or 60, or 70 years old? That consciousness cannot deny. Why I said so? We don't reach to the highest state of mindfulness because still some doubts are there. How can, how dare you say I am consciousness? I'm Stephen, I'm David, I'm David. So there is a doubt and there is a delusion. That is why we name it. There is a delusion of who am I? No, everything is okay. You are saying I am consciousness. As far as I attend the session, I am consciousness. And after that, I have to complete the sentence. <laughs> you don't know I am suffering and you are saying that I am conscious. So there is a non-conviction that I am. But why that non-conviction is there? Because of ignorance. Huh? Ashok said it's a delusionary image behind it. Look at other way. How many times you experience that you are different from the world of people, place, time, event, outside. How many times during the day? The moment I see that I am different, first thing what happened to the mind, that there is a world and there is I am. Mind says then the moment you say there is a duality, it means these two are different from each other. Say, pay attention, go with me, follow with me, my, my, what I am saying. So first the duality is created. Oh, here you are Stephen and here I am, so I am different. You are part of the world. I see your body, so you are the world. And I am with the body is different from you. So there is one body there who is different from me. And there is one body that is I am. Look at the delusion. Did you understand? Even if you do not understand, say yes, no problem. It's a gradual way of life. I told you the knowledge is realized in state. <clears throat> now see, there is another uh, doubt comes. How the brandy will say that we both are one, essentially one. One is beautiful, the other has unorganized beer. What happened? What happens into your mind? Did you see what happens to your mind? Think and contemplate what happened to your mind. The mind is recognizing. Mind brings the cognitive ability with reference to the body, gender, age, and long list. But why it happens? Ask yourself, be logical, why, why it happens? <clears throat> it happens because of the likes and dislikes. And the moment you have a likes and dislikes, the commander-in-chief enters into my head. And that commander-in-chief creates a doubt. And that doubt remains and continues. Forever. That duality, that delusion. Duality is a delusion. I like you. Say, for example, I like Stephen. 
So everyone's mind says, okay, why doesn't he like me also? But there is already the duality. Unconsciously, habitually, instinctively, impulsively, that is the nature of the mind. When you change that nature of the mind, the life changes. Then you need not to do anything, you are already in the state of mind. Again, I am repeating the question. I answered that question. How many times you experience that you are different from the world outside? The moment I have that, that, that perception, that cognition that I am different from the world outside, it means I am different from the people, the place, the time, preferences, prejudices, likes and dislikes, everything is gone. This is known as the reflected consciousness at the universal level. I'm explaining the same too. We have already understood the first metaphor. And the second metaphor is, it's in a part space. Do you remember? Say yes, part space and the infinite space all outside. We 100% know that the space inside the part and the outside is essentially one. When the part is broken, the space inside the part says, now let me merge into the infinite space, or it is already one. So these are the two spaces. And then the space with the part. That is the reflected consciousness brings that image in me which is known as an indivisible part with the space. When I say part space, it, I'm focused on only on the space and that space is the real self. When I talk of the real self, that space inside the part is the real, and that the same space is one with the infinite space. It is the Supreme Self, and we say it is the Absolute Reality, we say it is the Absolute God. But then, okay, so it means they, they are one. Yes, they are one. So we have a confusion. I started with that understanding that the moment the mind says you are different from me, it is based on my preferences. It is based on the images that my mind perceives in delusion. It is because of the doubt we have. So the space with the part is an individual. Who is an individual? Explain it in a different way. Individual is equal to body plus breath, energy, mind, intellect, plus I thought is known as an individual. I thought exists. It is, it is in thought. It is constantly changing. So as such, the individual does not exist. Yeah, for the sake of convenience, for the sake of language, I'm there, you are there, that's okay. <clears throat> but as such, it, it is a big illusion. And that is at the individual level. So we say there is a cosmic principle, there is a cosmic ego which is holding all the five elements, all the people together, all the things together. That is also reflected consciousness. So how this guy, this master uh, understands, uh, makes us understand through the metaphor. So we have a part space, we have a great space outside the part. And then you put the water. We recognize it, it as a water space. Does water space exist? It exists because of the part space. So look at it. <coughs> How beautiful the metaphor is. No master has given this metaphor. I told you this master lived hardly maybe six, seven hundred years ago. He read all the basic text. And after that, when he started writing what was revealed to him,
So now see the what the water space is not there. It is only a pot space. So water space is superimposed. And in that water space, because water is a reflected medium, wherever you put the water in the pot, and then you have a water containing clouds. Why I said water containing clouds? That is the entire world is being reflected in that pure consciousness. Entire universe, the entire galaxy, the stars in the earth, in the people, in the place, in the time, everything is reflected in that. That water containing clouds. So, in that water containing clouds, the entire world is reflected. So we have two reflected consciousness and so-called the two pure consciousnesses, if I say. I'm using a wrong statement for the right reason. So this master says that follow the way I'm using the metaphor, we will, we will come to a conclusion that there is only one consciousness, there are not four consciousness. The way there is only one space, uh, there is no cloud space, there is no water space, there is no pot space. So there is no space, so then I come to you your house, the moment I say I come to your house, I have created a duality. The moment I say you are David, I have already created, how to resolve this? <clears throat> how to resolve this? Do you see that? <clears throat> the way we recognize there is only one space inside the pot and outside the pot. What do you mean? I didn't get it. You see, as long as we have a doubt in the mind, the mind does not have a hundred percent conviction through the knowledge. Awakening does not take place. Compare it with what I said just now. You have point zero 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 twenty zero or fifty zero percent. Do you have non conviction about where is your home, what is your car, who is your honey? Long list. The car is parked outside the grass, someone touches no. This is my hundred percent conviction we have about our honey out of a relation, so-called long list. Do we have the same level of conviction that I am the consciousness? Done. And that conviction does not happen because the mind keeps the doubt in some emotional connection. Remember, not don't forget, those emotional dependence fails me in meditation. We practice meditation to remove the emotional dependence. That is very deep inside. And we remove the, we remove the delusion by listening to the teacher. So that is why this master says, first, that is the way we have been living. There is a universe, there is a world outside. Eh? Then we see that I and you are different. So there is a 
there is an individual soul and there is a God outside. You, know, you see, these four, we say consciousness cannot be divided, but still we have a doubt. Sam, you found that one consciousness. <laughs> See that. This is, you know, this journey. Remember what I said? The logical interpretation lives in the mind that I and you are different. <clears throat> so I and the world is different. So we are seeing that difference at the individual level. There are different parts. So there are different part spaces. So intellectually we know that the space is only one, the consciousness is only one. Not a serious discussion, it's a simple way to put it. Put it in another way. I'm just, you know, explaining how to understand that metaphor. And once we understand that metaphor, we, we, we keep in our head and then we can recognize there is only one consciousness. Even if I'm talking at an individual level, that is just for the sake of language, convenience. At the empirical level, at the material level, we are talking. But what I'm talking may not be true. No, no, I always speak the truth. Really? Where do you live? Ashok will say in India. Uh, you are speaking a lie. You're living on the earth. Which one is greater truth? Which one is greater truth? Check yourself. No, 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 I'm a woman. So are you a living being or a man or a woman first? So we will continue to use the same language. <clears throat> Obviously, if you are a woman, so you will definitely say women. But now a lot of things have changed, you know. So, we can use different phrases. LG, you know, I don't remember. LGBTQ, S, something like this. <laughs> so, even that is okay, but before that, I am a conscious being. Am I right or not? <laughs> no, we are not going against anyone. <clears throat> so the way we constantly use in our language and we take it as a at a face value. Where are you living? I'm living in Gilbert. I'm in Arizona. You are in New Jersey or I'm in India. I'm there. Well, casual. For the sake of convenience. But internally I know there is an earth planet, there is a galaxy system, there is a solar system. I'm a citizen of the earth. Do you see that? We forget what is real. Why we forget? Because there is a doubt. 0 0.020 plus 1. Again, I'm comparing. We don't have a doubt about our gender, about our age, about our house, about our honey, about our parents. So in the first metaphor of the, of the canvas, you have a starch canvas, the casual impressions, those casual impressions uh, are all, all the impressions accumulated in the mind. They trigger the mind. It becomes the subtle body where we sketch our life. I'm an individual and then we paint it. 
So we create the world of our own. What is my own world? I have a family, then I live here. Huh? I'm an Indian descent, you know, all these are different paintings. Do you still understand that reflected consciousness, which is the mind, the entire world that we have created lives in my mind. Behind that, there is a canvas. It does not touch. But in order to understand the entire scheme that there is a doubt remains that, you know, you are an individual, I'm an individual, then there is a, we feel that there is a supreme existence, you know, and that existence is different from me. So how to resolve these differences of so-called four stages of consciousnesses? Wrong phrase, for right reason. How to recognize, how to have that cognitive ability so that I live in that one consciousness which is called the absolute reality. Is this journey of awakening? What, what do you mean by awakening? You are in deep sleep. You are sleeping to your body and the mind and all the past impressions and stress and pleasure in the world outside. When you awake, what happens? The world appears before you. You awake to the world. And what is awakening? You awaken to the reality. You again awake to that absolute reality. That is awakening. Don't put a lot of uh, doubt into it. You know, if I have a beautiful experience of blue color, violet color, you know, then only I will have an awakening. It is better to see those colors with eyes open. They are perceived much better with eyes open with the sensor. What, what happened? Your cognitive ability. You live into that awareness. What is that awareness? One. You might have seen my masters pointing only one reality. Only one reality. Only one consciousness out of the four. So when we awake to that one consciousness, that is known as awakening. When we awake to the same world again and again, every day. Same stress, and same duality, same desires. That means I awake to the same world. And awakening means now that world does not exist. Ah, there is only one absolute reality that that is awakening. So then what happens internally at the cognition level, you treat the three bodies. We discussed about the three bodies, the physical, subtle and causal as a part space. No issue. Part three. At the same time, you have a cognition that I'm the pure consciousness. So if you identify with the part, you are an individual. It will divide the outer great space, infinite space from the limited space. And again, when it divides, that individual space becomes the cloud space. Oh, I live in this stressful world. We'll so there are still 100%, you know, there are, I won't say 100, but there are thousands of doubt lives in the mind. I can understand intellectually, but I can't experience that. You see another doubt? <laughs> I know you are my honey, but I have a doubt. Do you ever say, no, honey will leave you, I'll with you. This is too much. <laughs> I love you, but 
Uh, I told you that guy, you know, he said, I love you 200. Per I, I gave 200 percent to this girl and she stopped talking to me. But anyhow, he came with uh, another friend to my house last week. Now I want to meet you. I want to introduce you. So at least you can bless her so that if I give 200%, I said, this is again too much. Too much. Do, do, you, do you see the level of ignorance? <laughs> <Do you laughs> I said that your carrot cake that you brought is very good. <laughs> I should. You see, this we create unnecessary doubt and we need a kind of an assurance. So before leaving, uh, they both told me, bless, bless both of us. I said, I can only bless one. Why there is only one consciousness? <laughs> Do you see the doubt that remains? We, we get it. That is why the master keeps on talking and talking and talking. They don't allow you to talk. <laughs> so, why? Because they have to remove that doubt. And that emotional dependence still lives. We rationalize it. So in order to remove that emotional dependence, we do the practice and uh, we remove, how can I say, you remove the, the, the intellectual non-conviction by understanding. Once that is done, you see there is one absolute reality. There are not four consciousnesses. Wrong state phrase, but for the right reason. There is only one consciousness. You remove that reflected consciousness at the micro level. What does it mean? Individual. A recognition of that we all are different individuals that is a reflected consciousness at the individual level. <clears throat> How many people? Two, four, six, eight, nine. Total nine. Nine individuals. Reflected consciousness. Or you can say nine part spaces. Nine spaces with a part. That is the right phrase. We live in the same at the micro level, that reflected consciousness at the macro level is the world outside. <clears throat> that is being reflected in one consciousness. Conclusion? There is only one consciousness. Close your eyes. Eyes are closed. Why I said eyes are closed? You have to reason, interpret, right interpretation. It is not because I don't want to see the world outside. I have to rise in awareness as the sun rises. Does the sun say, okay, now wall, you can see me. Trees, I am ready for you. No. In the presence of the sunlight, everything is perceived. Rise in consciousness, we have a clarity of perception. That is the reason we have closed our eyes. So what happens, my friends, that when we close our eyes, the my individual, individuals, commander-in-chief returns, even though it is pure. That's why we are attending the session. 
again i'm i'm turning that that metaphor into so called non practice the individual returns and it squeezes the eyes you have to reason oh, this beard guy doesn't say you have to squeeze i have to squeeze my eyes be it care carefree so what happens that keeps you in the state of comfort what it means by being comfortable that consciousness which is the absolute reality that is the real self never loses being comfortable what yes no no but uh, if that is me then i find unease because of the reflected consciousness either at the micro level or the macro level i believe you are getting it if you're not getting you can look into the previous sessions when i explained about the four spaces <coughs> You see, I'm turning the practice into a knowledge. Why? I told you two reasons. Oh. What we have, what cognition we have, <clears throat> that consciousness cannot become uncomfortable discomfort unease why why i experience it i experience because i claim myself as an individual living in the world that individual in that world is macro and micro micro and macro reflected consciousness you see i'm using the same step so called if i use the being comfortable but that now i absorb that knowledge i absorb that cognitive ability i put everything on the youtube so those who do not have that deeper insight even if they listen to it they don't get there royal secret and still an open secret now go back so we will go back and we will see where we have the delusion so every time we remove that delusion what do you mean look at the neck joint <clears throat> <clears throat> which is more important to you awareness of the neck joint or neck joint really awareness so what happens you are already rising awareness no no then you said sensation comfort and steadiness which is more important your experience of sensation comfort and steadiness or awareness by which you experience sensation comfort and steadiness make a choice so oh, you mean to say that is the rise in consciousness answer is yes i'm not holding any secret i'm here and now Oh no no you said something that the space after that i see the space moving within i have already explained moving within is rise in awareness you don't move inside the body to see the skeleton blood and all the parts of the body moving within in direct reference to rise in awareness you cannot explain in language the multidimensional consciousness that is why you see the importance of learning from a teacher but anyhow go to the space oh i have reached to the space that's what you have been talking about 
What is the cognition? Now I see the space beyond the boundaries of so-called my body, physical body, your physical body, and the physical body of the world. What is left? Do you see the beauty of this metaphor? Every master is blown away. Those masters who have reached there, they always use this metaphor. They praise this master, what he has done. So if I say being comfortable is the first step, and that is the last step. That is why it is a non-practice. <laughs> I removed your delusion, see that? No, no, but you know, I have a lot of unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. Take that issue. <clears throat> so, are the unwanted, unwelcome thoughts are more important or the one who is aware of that. Who is aware of that? Who is that? I am consciousness. So I am conscious and I am aware I am aware, so I and awareness are one who knows unwanted, unwelcome thoughts. They are reflected consciousness. That is not me. That is a delusion that does not exist. It exists in appearance. <clears throat> When I go out and live in the world, I will use the reflected consciousness. Who uses? I am consciousness. Where is the problem? One more point to be understood to remove that wrong interpretation by the mind that results into doubt and emotional dependence. No, but I am interacting into that. The guy who is interacted into the world outside, the guy interacting it is an individual, reflected consciousness at the micro level, interacts with the reflected consciousness at the macro level. The world outside. And still the consciousness is independent of the two. Is it not? So in the same being comfortable, I understood what it means by being carefree. Now see that. <clears throat> You have to listen to it and sit down, contemplate and reflect again and again so you'll understand. Something popping in the same reflected consciousness or the, in my mind. That it is a non-practice. I'll prove it for your mind so that the doubt does not remain. No, no, you said, but what about when I look at the breath or I change the breath? Come on, who changes the breath? It is the individual at a reflected consciousness. The individual changes the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Are you the body? No. Are you the physical body? No. Are you the unwanted, unwelcome thoughts that also constitutes an individual? No. Are you the breath? No. So how can you claim you are doing something? 
that i-ness superimposed on the body claims i am here that i thought superimposes on the mind claims i am instructing you and you all are listening to me i have already created many individuals What do you mean? Even if I run and do all the breathing, yes. Who is breathing? Breath is moving in and out. It has changed the speed. Physical body minus superimposed I so in a <coughs> We can simply say I'm just aware <clears throat> there is a subsect of Buddhism which talks about Zen meditation. But that means just sitting. Even just sitting is a wrong phrase. Just sitting means doing nothing. Doing nothing means the individual consciousness is not there. Why? I don't identify myself with the part. What is that part? Physical body, subtle body, causal body. No, but I see the world outside. At the macro level, this is the same individual consciousness. It is the reflected. So emotional dependence is gone. Why? There is not two. I recognize the world is also a reflection. The way we borrow the consciousness, the way the mind borrows the consciousness and claims I am an individual the same way. The cosmic mind borrows the consciousness from the absolute consciousness and becomes the world. This is the metaphor. No, no, but when I have a pain, again you became an individual. You see the doubt? I have summarized this chapter, but we will remove all those <coughs> doubts. In the following session, the way the master removes that doubt, we will follow him. Who is the doer? You will find the individual consciousness is the doer. An individual is a reflected consciousness. It is the space with the part. It is the real self with the part. Where is that part? The physical body, the subtle body and the causal body from the first metaphor that we have understood.
we need to speak out why so the moment unwanted and welcome thought enters into the mind and the mind gets carried away you become alert you become awake and aware again oh no this is what it is so it means you have a cognition when the unwanted unwelcome thought enters into the mind you have a simple cognition you're not doing any practice what is that this is not me thought space minus thought is me So on the, all the unwanted, unwelcome thoughts loses their value. So let them come and go. Who cares? Did you listen to it, my friends? Let them come and go. Who cares? But why? Because you recognize or you awaken to one consciousness pervading, permeating presence everywhere. How can you say? That consciousness is present in the body, but it is not the physical body. How can you say? That is why I recognize here is my body. It is present in the breath, but it is not the breath. What are you saying? I recognize I'm conscious of the breath. Because that consciousness permeates the breath. What about the thought? Yes, it is present in the thought, but not the thought. Apply the same rule. It is present in my honey, but not my honey. Because I become conscious of the non-living entities only because consciousness is present there. How can I become conscious of anything? If the consciousness does not go there, it does not permeate, it does not en enclose. That is how I am aware of the part space. That is how I am aware of the individual. Is your mind saying I don't understand? That is where the teacher comes. Some thought comes to you, how long I have to do it, individual. <clears throat> I'm enjoying, individual. Thought comes, I recognize consciousness is present. I'm not the thought, but I'm present there. I'm not the body, but present in there. <clears throat> when the body becomes important, thought becomes important, delusion. 
and the mirage water becomes important. Do you see that? Why it becomes important? I gave value emotional dependence. That subtle area of the emotional dependence we have to break. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The visual consciousness says now is the time to return because the consciousness is present there. Mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <clears throat> you are aware of the right hand. I'm changing the expression. Become aware of the right hand too. You are already aware of the right hand. It's just a pointer. Aware of the left hand. Raise both your palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences and bring the hands down. Share your experiences. Stephen, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, Somewhat similar to last week, I think I, I, I mentioned that this tendency of con, you know confusing myself and overcomplicating this. So, so today I, I came in taking the approach of um, keeping it simple. So similar to our conversation on Wednesday when I tell you that there are times in which I don't want to get myself attached to things, so I drop it. I, I simplified today's piece and realized that when I started that whirlwind of, of thoughts in multiple directions, I stopped thinking about it and I kept moving into this dark space. And then I started thinking about the concept that pure consciousness is one um, and it's all pervading and part of it's the infinite space. So any time that any situation, anything that takes place that when we identify as the individual, we create boundaries and limits. Therefore, we can't be 
the pure consciousness when we identify as the individual. So in all situations, it just started becoming a, a quick um, awake awareness, contemplation, reflection, discernment, dispassion, all at the same time and saying, okay, that's individualistic. I'm not, I'm, that's not the pure consciousness. And then I just go into the space. And then at the very end, right before you started saying Om Shanti, I had this moment that says, we are all, we are all sharing our experiences. And at different times, those experiences are very, very similar. Yeah. And we're, we're not explaining or we're not talking about the experiences on an individual level, but we are sharing what we experience in the pure consciousness. And yeah. that's why they're the same, because it is one. It's a beautiful explanation. One thing that I want to take that all the principles are applied together. Why? It lives in the consciousness. Now see what happens when we have a so-called the four consciousnesses. I'll summarize. What do you see? Simple answer is the right hand. But can you see the right hand without the light? You cannot see it. Where is the light? Is it in the front or the back? No, on both the sides. I can see the back of it. Is the light in the right or the left? No, it is on both the sides. It is on the top and the bottom. No, it is also there. What do you mean? Is the light all pervading? Yes. Now what I see. Now what do you see? We see I see nothing. No, light is there. That is what the consciousness is. Consciousness is still there. Light is still there. So that consciousness appears to manifest in the presence of the object. Is the consciousness uh, Present behind the cushion, behind the Stephen, I see the cushion, it is there. Compare it with the light. Light is always there. It is all pervading. It is permeating. We are that consciousness. Beautiful. Thank you, Stephen. How are you, David and Jerry? Good, um, great, uh, different meditation, great meditation. The, um, the word that stuck out to me uh, during it was doubt. And then I believe you said that the next um, session, we're going to start to figure out how to remove doubt. So I started thinking about that going, it's um, perhaps we're, it's in, we're missing intellect. That's what causes doubt. So that was my whole meditation is around doubt and how do we get rid of doubt? And when we do get rid of doubt with the knowledge, then we're, it's a freer. And so that was my experience. Yes, that intense desire to know the doubt makes me the highest level of a seeker. That is what we need to understand. Oh no, what are the doubts, you know? Where are they? What am I going to do? How am I going to do? So that, you know, when I have an intense desire, all the thoughts comes to a stop. Same thing applies in a different way when we have a complete obsession towards anything in the world. Mind becomes blank. <laughs> but this is for a better reason. <laughs> that is a beautiful way to explain. How are you, Jerry? Sorry, I'm good, thank you. Um... Well, my mind went to, uh, or the mind went just to focusing on conscious, consciousness knows everything. Yeah. Everything doesn't know consciousness. Beautiful. So, yeah. So when, when anything comes up, it doesn't know consciousness, but consciousness knows all of it. It yeah. is. You see, beautiful. You see, you do the same practice all over different minds. 
listen to the same topic, but their interpretation depends on their level of awareness, which is very evident. The way that Stephen, you and the Jerry have shared this experience is, but this is one of the most, you contemplate on this statement, that consciousness knows everything, everyone, when, in all locations, now I'm expanding it, at all the time, all the time, but not other objects know the consciousness. Now answer this why. They are inert. Consciousness knows the mouse, but mouse does not know the consciousness. So I often use the, as long as the brain uses the consciousness, we live in delusion. When the consciousness uses the brain, we are awake. Consciousness uses the brain. The consciousness uses the brain. Now the consciousness appears as localized individual. But still the I know that I'm transcendental. But when the brain uses the consciousness, because I'm already limited. So from that limited individuality, I see you also, you are limited, the world is limited, everything is limited. That limitedness is the delusion, illusion, doubt. That is what we are going to remove that. Beautiful. How are you, Terry? I didn't have any thoughts. So, so beautiful. I just, uh, the whole thing went really fast. Very beautiful. And uh, then all of a sudden you said, uh, be aware of the right hand. And I and I did not. I thought, where, where did it go? Like, where did the time go? I didn't. I didn't, I had no awareness of the, of the time passing. Now you, we all need to contemplate on that aspect where the, all the first three friends share their experiences. So I'm summarizing that the, 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 the way the mouse does not know the consciousness, but the consciousness knows the mouse. Why? Because it is present here. That's why I'm conscious of the mouse. Now I'm using your uh, uh, sharing of the experiences. You said there is no thought and I only the space was there. Thought cannot know the consciousness. That's why there were no thought. It was only consciousness. This is what happens. That is a moment. Oh, I got it. Did you get it? Say yes. Even if you don't get it, no problem. We have to get rid of the doubt. How are you, <laughs> Sam? No, I feel like the cushion space right now. <laughs> you like the cushion space. Very good. So one day you keep on looking at the cushion. Because of the cushion, you become aware of the light of the consciousness. So it means what? I'm adding, you know, something is popping up in, in the same crazy mind. Because of the question, I can move to the consciousness that is all pervading. Am I right? I recognize, okay, here is a question. Okay, how? Because I'm conscious. Clear? So now I become conscious of a thought. So every thought, unwanted, unwelcome thought makes me aware of the one consciousness. When? Everywhere. Where? All the location. What is that state? You know. How are you? We have done brandy, yes. Good morning, I'm good, thanks. Um, when I was experiencing this space, 
inside and outside of the body. I had this memory of um, some time ago, we did some breathing exercise and I think it was Stephen, you know, Stephen, where his breath was, and he was like, said that you said something, Stephen, about your breath being inside the body and you asked him where his breath was and you were like, oh, and so I was able to, with that, I don't know why I remember that, but with that, I was able just to more deeply experience the space being everywhere. Um, and then I didn't want to come out. Rightly. You, again, you uh, again explained almost the same thing. If I use the same word, the consciousness knows everything. It knows the breath. But the breath does not know it. But when my mind says, no, no, the breath knows it, I know it. So that has become an individual consciousness. So we got limitedness. And the moment we are limited, we, our perception, our cognitive ability is limited with an I thought, which contains a lot of doubt and Rest. Otherwise, we continue to see one consciousness. Beautiful. Rani, how are you, Wave Ho? Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, I'm good. Uh, what I was just understanding is that uh, whatever I see from my mind is just a reflection. Every thought is a reflection. It is not original. It comes with a reflection which I see in the presence of the consciousness. So when I see like that, then I will say that I am not the reflection because reflection will change. So I am the consciousness in that case. So that is what I was trying to understand. Yes. I think your mind went deeper and I will explain from the reference. That's very important I'm, what I'm going to say. Uh, not what I'm going to say, what the teacher is going to say. You know. Forget about this guy. I see you indirectly. What it means. I see you through the mind, mind moving through the sense organ. So there is a barrier. There are two barriers. One is the mind and other is the sense organ. So I do I see you indirectly. I I know you indirectly through the mind. That is what your mind is saying. What if I see you directly? You no longer remain as an individual. I no longer remain as an individual. I see you directly. Get rid of the sense organs. No, not physically. Cognitive ability. That is the meaning of just awareness. So rightly said, yeah. That is a t another teaching from another master. So I'm bringing it here. How are you, Anastasia? Then we will go to her. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Yes. It was very deep meditation. I saw uh, an eye. Uh, sometimes I have this vision, this time it was very big and uh, I lost my body uh, feeling and time uh, in this meditation loop the same time, very long and very quick. I cannot explain this as, as if it was a pause in uh, time and also uh, at the end I felt between my uh, my my hands were like this. I just put them like that, and I I felt as if my hands were like this, and between them was a sphere or something like something round moving, and it was it took my attention because I have never experienced something like that. Uh, yeah, that's all. Why I give interpretation of the experiences that you share because majority of these experiences are scribed, are written by great masters. So every master has a different way and uh, the way they have written. Now see what she says that I see the I. 
they refer to as a third eye. And people start saying that, no, I have to focus here to see the third eye. There is no third eye here. It is a cognitive ability. It is a right perception. How can you, even if you put the third eye like these two eyes, how do you want to put it? Uh, horizontally or vertically? And people get trapped by this. Masters are, have written rightly, but we don't study. We do not understand. We do not continue the journey. So that is the first we have to remove. It does not mean that we will not have the same experiences. The time comes, we'll have the same experiences. So a third eye means there is a right perception. What is right perception? I have just explained that we see directly. We don't see indirectly. It means what? It is rise in awareness. What happens in rise in awareness? She says that she lost her body. Really? When you have a rise in awareness, there is no part. I see there is only one space. Live with the space, continue. Live with the parts of suffering. How are you, sir? Ashokji. <clears throat> we normally use the word, you know, after your name, if I say Brandy G. It means, you know, I'm doing it out of humility and total respect. Yes, sir. Sir G. No, no, no. We can say he's blocked, but he is not blocked. We have to use that. Oh, he's hanging. He's not hanging. That is what, you know, we have to understand. We have to live in that independent state of the consciousness. So obviously I show, you know, oh, maybe I sat, I added G, that's why he's hanged. So let him remain hanging, I think. Uh, we will share his experiences next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.